Recording in progress. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, everyone. Hello. We're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order, 6.02 p.m. And to kick things off, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, for all. Beautiful. Okay, we'll get a roll call as well. <laughs> we have an injury. <laughs> okay, Chair Lawson. Present. Vice Chair Barrett. I'm here. Thank you, Lisa Bueller. Present. Jacqueline Hunt. Present. I got you already. Present. Am I close? <laughs> and your ex officio this evening is Councilor Ricky Smith. Here. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Councilor. Uh, this time, we will see if there's any public comment. Was anything submitted ahead of time? Didn't receive. Well, I received some things late tonight. Um, I believe the people that submitted them are here. <laughs> so they can, I, I didn't have, I got them on my phone after hours. So I Sounds didn't have good. time to send them to anybody. All right. Well, welcome. Um, any particular order? Are you part of the same group? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm part of the same group. Perfect. Well, if you don't mind kind of introducing yourselves, kind of giving a quick spiel while you're here. Yeah, uh, my name is Elizabeth. No. We'll, we'll have you use the microphone. Oh, you're okay. on. You're, yeah, we're recording. Oh. <laughs> my name is Elizabeth Bolkin. I am living in the Sunset Ridge community phase two. I am here to gain a little bit more information about the giant project that's supposed to go across the street from our neighborhood. Um, we have been informing our neighbors of the information that we have. We've also sent in um, the information that we've gathered on why we are not for far west in the distribution center. Um, we'd love to get any information and input from you guys and also share our feeling and what we feel as a community. We're <laughs> okay, so somebody didn't have to go out of the car. Yeah, for all of you. Okay. Um, just second this. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sandy Reeser, and I also live in the Pepperidge for phase two. Mm -hmm. um, and like Elizabeth said, we're here to gain information and, and maybe, you know, share some of our own concerns, if possible, with the proposed, you know, building of Far West and the distribution center. I know it's still in its um, infancy, yes, um, but we have concerns and we don't want to wait until it's too late. And so we want to talk about it now. And we had absolutely we knew something you know we're not completely naive when we moved in there thinking we would be surrounded by farmland for years um, i don't know if people can talk now which is good yeah that's totally okay good. but um so we definitely knew something was you know they were going to build matter of fact one resident said well i think they're putting in a costco behind us <laughs> <laughs> so i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of misinformation and there's a lot of, you know, information that we're learning that it's like, okay, is this common knowledge? Is this, you know, what should we have known here? Well, we don't know. We didn't know what we didn't know, but we knew, you know, something was going to go in there. What we did know is we moved to North Plains to be part of the community and to, um, support the goals of the community, which we want, we understood to be retaining the small town feel, retaining the good neighbor feel of the community. And what is being proposed just seems um, very, very opposite of that. They're interdusted. <laughs> and there are plenty of industrial parts around us 
that are functioning um, in more of a communal way. And I think in my letter to the mayor and to, uh, anyway, to you guys, mm -hmm. that's what I said was, you know, take for instance, that, um, what's that coffee shop? This is not. No, no, they're not. But over by Hondo Dog Park, there's a garden. Long Bottom. Long Bottom. Long Bottom Coffee Shop. I mean, that's a very heavy industrial. Mm -hmm. And it, but it's community. It's industrial and community. And that's what we're hoping is I I understand. I'm in real estate. I understand that it's it's a private owner and they can sell to whoever they want. Mm -hmm. But as a city council, we do have some control over what it's going to look like and what the feel is and where it's going to go. And that's all we're asking. We're not trying to be jerks. We're not trying to, oh, look at those people out there in that new neighborhood. They're trying to change it. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to enhance what is happening to the land around us. And so we have some strong concerns. And we don't know what we don't know. But I don't want to wait till it's too late. So there you have it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, hey, one thing I just want to make clear, because I, I heard it just in a second ago, um, is just to make sure that we clearly say that this is not city council um, that you're meeting with right now. This is a a committee underneath city council. So we just wanna make sure that the expectations are clear that if you wanna voice those concerns to city council, you're a week early to the meeting. City council will meet next week, I believe. Two weeks. Oh, let me give the information. We just already put the name on the agenda, so we don't have to be a part of it. <laughs> I like the remote better. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Bill Reed. I'm the city finance director. Um, and so, just to kind of get um, back to what um, Chris um, was mentioning. So, um, this is the, the Economic Development Committee. And thank you for coming and making a comment because that's 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 part of the body hearing comment from residents uh, pro and con about. It. Um, more formally, you will have you have three opportunities actually. But one of one's already started to have your input, comment, register concerns about that development project. Um, the first one is they've had a neighborhood meeting and they have um, they they shared contact information to reach them directly and for you to let them know what your concerns are what you want for them to better explain, what you want them to um, study, and um, for information and assurance of any questions or concerns you have. When they officially put a, um, a development application um, before our planning commission, um, and that's a different body of, of the city, um, that one hears all land use applications and makes recommendations uh, based on zoning and other requirements um, for a development of whatever type. They formally hear that, and that hasn't been scheduled, or that has, but we don't have anything in yet. So the planning commission would put that on the agenda. Yeah. So they haven't come to the city with a with a, a formal development application with a with a plan in place. Um, when they do, that will have a whole process. Every, um, you'll all be noticed because you're neighbors. You'll be invited to come and make formal comments um, about all of the, they will have to provide the city all of the details of the development, um, including all the studies that they were required to do for traffic. And, um, there's, a, there's a litany of things that they have to produce and provide to the city. Um, you'll be noticed and you'll have opportunity to formally um, have comment in that process as well. Um, Depending on what the planning commission mentions or decides as far as a recommendation to city council, um, planning commission doesn't authorize development. Ultimately, city council does. They make a recommendation to city council. 
And the city council will have a process whereby they hear by residents. It can be the exact same, <laughs> the exact same comments, they can be different comments, um, but the city council also hears and then makes final decision. So between now and then, those are really the three best avenues I would invite you to. You're welcome here. I, I, but I just want you to know that we don't have a recommendation <laughs> role. Um, I, um, if you will have your contact, we'll have your information. Um, I can share that with the city manager. We can make sure that um, if you haven't gotten the contact information, we can, um, we can get that to you. But as a body, we this body just hears about new development and talks about it and then kind of plans things like downtown and um, what land we don't have and even we're work, currently working on our urban growth boundary expansion because we have run out of land in the city, unfortunately, and we have to we have to add it under state law. So um, we talk about those things as well, but there's no decision making uh, here, just to let me know. Well, and like Elizabeth said, we're, we're only here because I saw it at the bottom of the agenda, of the agenda unfinished business, yeah. and it's like, oh, wait, let's go. Yeah, no, 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 so, no. And you're, thank you. No, and you're very, and you're welcome to be here. I, you know, it, um, I just, I, you know, I just want to, to, to explain that there are um, more formal processes where your comments will be more formally put into the record on. And I'm sorry we're taking up oh, we're taking up your time. No, but no, it's quite right. right. It's your, it's your residence. This is the city, yeah. your residence. That's Please how it be works. here. Uh, <laughs> and part of our concern too was that last meeting where they talked a very I've only met one or two people that actually got the letter from the company, the notice. We actually heard about it at the barbecue. In our last meeting with the group too, we we asked some questions and they weren't able to give us much detail. So sadly, we don't have a lot of information as far as what what the proposal is even yet. Because when we talked to the the broker last week, he said he couldn't give us any, or not last week, last month, we couldn't get any details. That's, that's a really, actually, that's a really good point. I think that's why maybe, um, maybe it feels like it's a little amorphous right now. Um, they don't actually right now have a, the reason why they haven't come to the city with the development application is because they don't yet have firmed up yet what specifically development is. And in fact, the broker is marketing the property in a, you know, flexibly. So I guess what I mean to say is um, they're marketing the property in, with a concept on it that kind of is a catch-all type of building. Like, like they don't honestly know yet if it's going to have a lot. I know one of the concerns is traffic and, and, and how many bay doors are on the building. And that's something to track as residents if you have concerns about tra the traffic, absolutely. But what I will say is what comes into, they don't know specifically what things are going to look like. They just kind of have a concept. Um, what they may come in with with something that has more doors on it potentially. They may come in with something with fewer doors and freight traffic. So until we see exactly what they're planning and they're not quite there yet, um, it's hard for us to say. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, your traffic impact study uh, really. You know, we we don't have anything ourselves to judge yet. I guess so. If you feel like you don't have something specific to kind of evaluate, we don't either. Uh, but that's really the planning commission stage of things. So just be ready for that is what I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll make a couple comments. <clears throat> this will tell you a little bit. It's, this is a concept that three years, I think, they've talked about. This is as far as they've gotten. The other thing is we have two city councilors in, that live in phase one myself and Trista Pippen. So we're gonna be definitely looking out for Sunset Ridge. So there's two out of six that you've got. <laughs> so if you got any questions coming up, you can get a hold of myself or Trista Pippen. I'll be asking for your address. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think you're in good hands. Thank you. Um, we have some people who have come and joined online. Are they, are you um, their residents?
who um, would like to make a comment at this time? You're welcome to. Uh, well, uh, this is Ruben. I'm from Sunset Ridge. Uh, yeah, I got all the, uh, I got your answer. I get your uh, information. I think this is uh, uh, good information that uh, we have another opportunity to uh, express our concerns and it's good to know. I feel more, much more comfortable now. Thank you. Okay, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Yes. Anybody else who joined? I will take a uh, chair. I think that's enough. All right. Well, thanks everyone for being here, for calling in. I guess we know if we want a larger audience, we know what to put on the agenda. <laughs> yes. uh, we'll go ahead and move into the group of last month's meeting minutes. Um, just a quick. Um, yes. Excuse me, I just joined a few minutes ago and I'm from Sunset Ridge One and I still have very con some concerns about this project. And if the city is more can communicate with us better in terms of what's gonna happen or what's the impact. But I, I as a resident in this type of this neighborhood, I don't think that that type of business is the type of business that needs to be built close to a neighborhood like this. You don't see those business in other uh, neighborhoods. Why North Plains? They have oh. lots of opening, open field to build this facility in Cornelius, Banks, Forest Grove, far away from neighbor, neighborhoods. So Thank how you, the city it. council, how the city council yeah. is considering or how the city is considering such atrocity in building a scrap metal facility close to neighborhood, close to a school with a pathway that connect a walking parents, walking kids every day, uh, with this huge facility, which will allow 60 trucks, heavy trucks carrying all those uh, heavy metals during the day. I, I, I still cannot believe how the city allowed to receive a proposal. So uh, it, it, it doesn't, it's not normal, I guess. So I'm just here to express how I feel, and I would like to be more involved in knowing what's gonna happen and what we can do, or I can do, or our community can do to block this terrible idea. Thank you, Felipe. Uh, just to clarify something, um, because you do ask some questions. I, I don't know if you heard um, the conversation before. It does sound like you just joined. But yes, five, four minutes ago. No, no problem. Um, between that, so there are different stages of a development application, like a development like this. It goes through a process that has a few different stages whereby residents can um, register concerns um, or ask questions. Um, one of them is directly to the developer, the develop the app. The, the company that will be the applicant of a development on that property. Um, they've had a neighborhood meeting and they've shared their contact information, um, but we can help facilitate getting that information to you if you don't have it, but that's direct um, contact with the, uh, the company or the, the representative of the company who was looking at building on the property. The second one is that when the city does receive a formal development application, a plan for the site and all of the studies and information of, about the project sufficient for the city to decide whether or not it's okay for them to build, the planning commission is the formal body of the city that hears all of that, reviews all of it, and what if needed, denies it, it adds or puts conditions upon the development, um, all of those things. That's the body that evaluates in detail the merits of the development application. And then even after that, that's a recommendation to city council. City council then gets to make the final decision based on what the recommendation is 
by the planning commission. So those are the phases of the process moving forward where you as a okay. resident, okay. you as a resident can, can formally give your, you know, give your um, bit of evaluation, questions, opposition. Now, having said that, what I, what I do want to explain so that um, kind of lay out for, for residents who are concerned about why would a facility like this be located in a neighborhood? All of the land north of West Union Road across from Sunset Ridge is zoned general industrial. And it has been for a number of years. Yeah, I know. But so, those so, business, excuse me, those business, they don't cause any disruption in our life. They don't have, have trucks running around all the time in that narrow Western Union, North Jackson Street. It's just once in a while, but that facility, it's going to be huge compared with that little tiny business over there. So I know it's industrial, but why it needs to be heavy? It can be just light, just like we do have right now, and it's fine. That's the thing. I heard from a neighbor who works in the city, and he called that a nasty business because since they scrap metals and recycle metals, it's gonna open doors for people who steal metal, like the front cars parking in our driveways, and they will bring the metal, stolen metal, to sell in, across our house. Then we're gonna bring maybe criminals to drive by our house because they want to sell scrap metals for easy money. And everybody know that this happens. The guy who works from the city, but not North Plains, he works for Beaverton or his brother, he said that is a nasty business. And he does, he knows how this type of business is conducted. So I but, don't but think it's a good idea to have bad people driving crappy cars, selling stolen goods for easy money in front of my house. Felipe, so, thank you. Um, again, this body is is not here to take public comment and put that into an evaluation of a development proposal. The, the time for all of that will be before now with the business plot that will apply for development and at planning commission. Thank you for being here. We, we welcome the comment, but in the but this but this is the economic development committee, and so in the interest of time, we will will probably should move on to the next agenda item. But I will say, all of the land on the north of West Union Road is zoned industrial, and different industrial types of businesses are can be entitled for development. We don't know what they're bringing in specifically, but the city will evaluate the development application when the city receives it based on its merits and how it stacks up with what's required of it by zoning and, and other regulations. And there will come a time when very formally you, you are invited to register those concerns. But thank you for being here. Appreciate it. I mean, that, that's, okay, thank you thank so you. much. To clarify a lot. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Derek, back to you. All right, um, a quick rundown from last month. Again, met with Colin Russell gave his presentation on the development. Uh, we had a couple of questions out to him, um, question answer session. Uh, we then kind of dove into different steps and questions we could take with Mary Bosch. Speaking of the downtown uh, revitalization, uh, we are meeting with her next month. So we'll get into that tonight. Um, and then we had just a further discussion of the Knights of Pythias building potentially scheduling a walk through next steps we can take with the new tenant. Um, and then the last uh, last piece, Lisa gave a wonderful rundown of the downtown improvement plan PAC meeting. Um, and that was just about it. Um, Bill gave a few notes on the URA extension, um, the EOA updates, things like that. Any questions 
on the phone here from last month. Make a motion to approve the minutes from last month. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. Uh, now we can kind of get into technically some unfinished business, uh, but we'll dive in with the um, follow up, I guess, to Colin's presentation last month. Um, Chris, I know you were pretty interested in how we can follow up with him, how we can work with brokers down the line um, in developing, whether it's flyers, handouts, uh, essentially help them with the marketing and how that can be used just as an example kind of going forward. Uh, yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to? No, I just remember him mentioning quite a bit that they have they have a forum or an outlet they essentially all look at. And so there's an opportunity for us um, as a city to go on there and then put, you know, what properties we have available. So it's not reinventing the wheel. It's just we need to get in touch with uh, Colin and just say, hey, how do we how do we get the properties that are available in the city on that and make sure that they're front and center and move forward uh, with that? So I don't think we need to reinvent anything. I think we just need to get in touch with them and make sure that we have our properties listed in there. Gotcha. Perfect. And I think uh, Colin, as well as just about any other you know, commercial real estate agent broker we could work with, would probably have a pretty good familiarity with, uh, I think you mentioned LoopNet and a couple other their systems that they use. And, um, I think that would be pretty ideal to work with them hand in hand, being able to kind of sculpt different um, flyers, one pagers, things like that, uh, collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. um, second note we had was about skepticism and opposition towards a project. I think we covered that pretty well here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we did. And I think, I think, yeah, no, it was good to have folks show up. Um, and it was good to hear things and um, hopefully folks who uh, hopefully folks took away that there are several opportunities. <laughs> this isn't the best, I guess what I want to get at is that this is definitely not your best shot at, at affecting any decisions about the property. Um, those other stages of the process um, are really where we really want to hear from you. So be sure to um, take that opportunity. Um, but this is not the best um, venue for for that. Um, thank for your buck, so to speak. Yeah. And I think. I just, oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, I did just want to mention. I mean, as a body, it's our goal to look at things like this through the lens of economic development. So we're going to play it out. But at the same time, we all have the same mission of keeping the small town feel, being able to do what's right and healthy for the town. Um, so it's our duty to look at it through that lens, but as residents, we're obviously going to uh, do what's in the best interest of our fellow residents. So, Chris, did you have something? You nailed it. I was just going to say, it really, you know, while we're not the group to to affect anything as far as like the ball once it's been rolling downhill, you know, this body, our job is to go out and try and attract new businesses uh, to the area, and so we just got a really good feedback from other members of the city, what type of businesses they don't want us to go out and attract. So while, while it wasn't the intention of what they came here to do, I think it really, it does help us as we move forward. And so again, anyone that's still online and those that came, like, thank you for the comments. Uh, while it won't help with this specific situation, trust me, it will help us as we continue to plan and look for businesses. Absolutely. Uh, we can move along to next month. So we're meeting with Mary, Bill, as far as you know, we're still on for November. We are, she has on our calendar. Um, she couldn't make this evening because she's in, in New York helping with new, helping with young family and new baby on the way, second grandchild. <laughs> but she will be here in November. Perfect. Um, so I kind of wanted to just do like a group refresh, um, put a list together of, topics we want to cover with her, questions that we had from our last session, which I know was a, a while ago. Um, so it might be a bit of a starting from the bottom, starting fresh with questions. But 
Um, any topics just right off the bat that the group would like to cover with her? I was looking at the the minutes from last month, um, and one of the things you know I still want to to focus on is somehow bringing a once a month, uh, whether it's a farmers market, you know, evening event, whatever you want to call it, uh, down to Main Street. And I know that she's had success doing that in other cities of our size. And how can we we duplicate the same thing that they've done and have some success with it? I think for doing Main Street and doing Main Street right, that's going to be a big piece of it is getting people to go down there. And I had mentioned last time, I was really intrigued by her anecdote about the town that did the, the volunteer day once a year and, and trying to institute something like that as well. Um, I know one of the topics I was looking forward to is kind of her advice or guidance on connecting with existing businesses, how we can be a conduit to, between them and events and uh, creating, we were going to use Pilgrim's Nuts for, as an example, as kind of a, a case study a little bit. Um, so I'll jot that down. Um, I believe also, is Mary working in conjunction with the Project Advisory Committee as well, or is it kind of a separate work stream? The advice with the downtown? Yeah. Yeah, she's, yeah, a, least, yeah, okay. she's, a, she's a sub consultant um, on the downtown plan um, with the state, for us. <laughs> but the state's actually the one paying the bill for the project. Um, but yes, yeah, she is formally a sub consultant. Um, and so really looping the EDC in and trying to kind of help establish some formal duties and um, things that the EDC as a body can actively work on, that's um, not an add-on, but she saw, she recognizes that North Plains for downtown to work and, and the gen for generally speaking, the economy to work, the EDC as a body um, should be, well, should be doing doing things mm -hmm. so yes so perfect yeah and that kind of ties in how i know she has vast experience with edcs and very similar bodies and so how she can see us actually making tangible change uh just from her experience yeah. um, another topic i wanted to focus on too was not necessarily the going co opportunity area, but how that will tie into downtown revitalization and just kind of the overall flow of the city. If the main focus is going to be revitalizing downtown, how does that affect kind of some of the other areas that are being developed and businesses being positioned in different locations? Uh, Chris or Jacqueline, any other topics? I think you hit on the one I had mentioned previously, and it's you know relevant to the conversation from uh, folks that have joined this meeting. Is as we consider types of businesses and location of businesses, given that we're on the brink of a big planning, um, you know, delivering a new plan for the future as far as how many acres of what type and where they go, it would be lovely to, um, you know, gather Mary's expertise in that area as I look at her work in, in industrial park strategic planning. Yeah, absolutely. The UGB expansion would be a big, big topic. There's a lot of ground to cover. Do we have an hour? There is. <laughs> yeah, an hour. All right. <laughs> Well, I would say that maybe we, if, if, I, if I were to vote, my priority would be, okay, what does she envision as our role in working with city staff? Right. And then you get to other topics. Yeah, Chris was with me. Mm -hmm. And she does have a presentation that I'm sure will speak to a lot of this already. So, okay, excellent. Um, anything else quickly before we, Move on. Perfect. 
Um, and then just quickly wanted to run through just some developments, ongoing development projects within the city. Um, I know Bill touched on a few last month, um, specifically the next of 50s building, how we can be involved with that. Um, any updates, things of note as far as as far as things in development go? Um, new developments. So um, the Taco Bell is structure is up, and they're working on. Um, I don't know who drives by. I drive by there every day at least once, so yeah. it's always good to kind of keep tabs on what's going on. Um, they're getting closer and closer to. Um, occupancy permit with the county and we're not there yet but they will be before long um the commercial building behind it the roll tide development i don't know of any tenants but that building is getting very close to being done and that's five thousand square feet so hopefully the owner dave uh, van de Hay, will um, i know he's been working on tenants so hopefully we'll see um, what's going to be in there soon uh, pilgrims nuts they are actively they've moved in and they have um, been busy bees in there. My understanding is they have a grand opening next week. Is they that do. right? They're doing a ribbon cutting next week. I don't know which day Cindy came in and got the big scissors. Well, I <laughs> yesterday in the ribbon. Um, and I did. I don't know if you got. You guys probably don't go on Facebook, but they have posted a couple of pictures. One side is going to be a bakery Very cool. uh, with oh, more okay. baked goods, and the other side is the manufacturer so there will be a commercial aspect where people can watch yes okay. yes um and uh, by the amount of travel that they do they're obviously gonna have to pay somebody to work the store because mm -hmm. they have been as from california to washington in the last week both directions wow and now and up over at the coast so um they're very busy people <laughs> I, I envision it like a uh, saltwater taffy shop. I kind of some think sorts. that too. Yeah, and they, if you look at the picture, um, they've got a couple of empty cases, you know, that are sitting there waiting to be placed, and so it's it's pretty exciting. They do a lot of markets. They do a lot of markets. That was their the big Beach, thing to start out with. Seaside. Yes. I think. Yeah. What can we do to get? In, um, like, what do they need to do? I know in the past when I've done this for businesses, the business had to apply for it. But getting their logo name on the freeway exit sign, um, how can we come alongside and help facilitate that? Or is it something we can submit for them? I mean, that'd be great if we already got people coming to the city um, for their business. Let's make sure people know which exit it's at and they can go through the city more often. That is a mighty fine question, Chris. I don't know the answer to it. Um, I. I don't know when they'll be ready for, I don't know when they're going to be um, available for some kind of meeting, but I think that would be the first thing. Um, I think what is, of, I think what's so, what's so promising about them, I mean, what, they're, what they plan on doing inside the building is great. It's great for downtown, it's great for residents. It's a you know, new, new thing to go do and buy and enjoy and, and visit downtown in the process. Um, but um, what Councillor Smith was getting at with his comment about how far and wide, as well as the Laurier Recorder, how far and wide they're, they do events, they do events. <laughs> um, we have somebody who has grown, they actually have a very large online sales footprint. That's the vast majority of their business, actually. Um, at this point, I understand. And so we have a business that has grown to this point by doing so many events, and in some cases, organizing those events. So we kind of have in the heart of our downtowns, a company that knows how to run successful events, and that's exactly what we need. So whenever we can meet with them to talk about signage on the freeway, to talk about events, to learn about what they're doing and how they can be supported, I think um, is a, will be a wonderful opportunity. I just don't know when that, how soon that's going to be, but we can wrap all of those questions up in that conversation, I would say. Okay. One thing they talked about <clears throat> trying to do the last two years was do a Saturday market type thing, mm -hmm. but it hasn't come to conversion. Like they're not getting what they want. So maybe that's a discussion. They should come to the parks department like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I talked to her at the garlic festival. Okay. But the area they were giving, given to do it next to the senior center down the hill and they, they did not want to do that 
So, no, I know. You're, yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of one of the goals we have is to get a farmer's market or Saturday market or whatever you name it. So it seems like we got an ally already on the street to help us with it. Well, she's got a lot of connections. She can put it together if we have the spot for or work with her a lot. I'm guessing we could schedule one of you guys to contact or maybe schedule something. I imagine after the first of the year with them getting their, I mean, you maybe have a short week, <clears throat> but they are traveling for all these bazaars, holiday bazaars and stuff. And so they're. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was maybe invite them as a guest speaker you know, uh, yeah, in December, yeah. but to your point, that's probably not the best time. Well, it, I mean, you can ask, it doesn't have to ask. Yeah. Like, they have to be home sometime. Well, I, I think what you could do is, is you could roll, I think, I think probably the most opportune thing is to is to you know propose that it would be, springtime is the perfect time and there's plenty of advance notice to roll out some kind of planned event or events and to say you know we would love to meet with you and start talking about that and maybe it's not in the the, the middle of December maybe it's not when, maybe it's not when they're in Mexico resting from everything in January but you know I think we could probably kind of pitch it as we want to learn about you we understand that you do events um you know how can we I think that's how you do it is kind of give like a future right yeah it's like a long game mm -hmm. or so. mm -hmm. okay and then just really quick Lori back to the grand opening mm -hmm. is in terms of the the marketing, the publication of that type of event, is that done solely by you? chambers? Okay. That's how I found out about it was through Cindy. Okay. Um, I wish I would have known we could have put something in the city newsletter, but we can right. still put something on the city's webpage if I can get enough information yeah. mm -hmm. before the end of this week. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna try and get with Cindy and see what I can find out, date, time, and that kind of stuff. And um and then at some point, I will go down to them like I did to La Loteria, and I'll talk to them about our newsletter and how you can buy ad space. And I gave them an offer on it on their first deal, right. you know, right. half page or quarter page print or something anyway. And so I want them to be aware that they have that option as well. Um, so it's just catching them when they're there. Right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Something like that, I think, is a great opportunity to have at least a representative from the EDC there mm -hmm. um, and just going forward for things like grand openings mm -hmm. or just really anything like that where it might not mean a whole lot to them to have us there but it just kind of helped be that tie, us, tie them to the city in some way. I think Bill, Bill and I can go down to the grand opening. Yeah. <laughs> Free free samples. Somebody has to go. Try <laughs> you want to try those margarita cashews or whatever they are. Glory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's. I'm. I mean, I think <clears throat> I speak for the group. I'm excited because I, I think it will be a really exciting spot for us to to work with, and they sound like great people as well. So. Um. Anything else in terms of new developments? Um, new developments. Actually, let me just really quickly say uh, next month, just to remind everybody, when we do have Mary here and we do talk a bit more about um, Pilgrim's Nuts, Councillor Russ Sheldon will be our ex officio. He is the uh, member of the Knights of Pythias that was heavily involved in getting Pilgrim's Nuts there and, and um, advertising the space and all that. So that it will be great to kind of have that hat on him <laughs> when he's here also. So yeah. just, um, so, uh, you know, questions, you know, how to get involved. He's also, um, is he the president of the chamber right now? I believe he is. If he's not, he's like, like right. yeah. he's so, a part member of the board. Yeah. He is a member of the board of the chamber. So questions about how the EDC can work with the chamber when there are business grand openings and things like that can also be, um, you know, a conversation or pitched as a, you know, it'd be great to talk about that because we want to be assisting that. Or, you know. So anyway, he has a few hats that he can, he can talk about these things wearing. Um, other new developments, I think the only other new development I can think of um, is 
this past week, last week, we learned from Oregon, excuse me, technically from Oregon Department of Transportation that we were awarded our $210,000 um, urban growth boundary concept plan grant. So when the decision is made on where expansion will happen around us, that grant from the state and Department of Land Conservation and Development, both of those agencies manage that grant fund. Um, we will begin formally doing concept planning and infrastructure planning. And that, this might be too far in the weeds, that budget gets allocated to our consulting company firm that we hired, in this case, 3J, who's been doing the work with the UGV expansion? The, the state pays. Like we don't, no money comes to the city. Yeah. It's, yeah. We don't get to choose what to do with it, but we do. We choose, yeah, we, yeah there are choices we make. We scope it. Yeah. Although we actually have our first meeting about that is next week with Andy and I, with, with our, the ODOT representative. Um, the city specifies a ton. Okay. <laughs> but no money comes in the door that we have to send the control. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I do have one question. I did call into the planning commission meeting last month because they discussed the EOA, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. Would you recommend, I know this next planning commission meeting, they have multiple topics, including public comment. Are any of those topics you think would be valuable for us to call into? Yes. <laughs> um, next Wednesday, the planning commission has a very full agenda. And the smile on Maury's face says it all. I'm bringing my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll be a long meeting. It's actually uh, starting an hour early. That's how long we expect it to go. Our yeah. normal will start at seven and it's starting at six. So. Yeah, so at, starting at six o'clock, actually the work session before at five thirty. the 5.30 yes. work session, then the, then the regular meeting starts an hour early because there's so much on the agenda. Right now, first on the agenda will be planning commission hearing the amendments to the EOA in response to DLCD's comments. After that, it shouldn't take that long because it's just they're just hearing what the amendments were and then recommending approval of those amendments to council. It's not the full EOA document. After that, count, or excuse me, planning commission will be hearing about the mixed use development at Burnt Hill, right there on Main and Ray. Um, there is an, the issue of, or there's, there's going to be commercial space in there and they've been planning that project so that Brindle residents will have nearby commercial opportunity or services opportunity, but trying to balance that with not doing too much commercial so close to downtown when downtown is trying to revitalize. So um, that, that will be the conversation, that will be heard as well. So those, those are the first two items right now, these first two items on the agenda. It could be misremembering, but I believe the initial plans had quite a few commercial spots. Uh, that is correct. The first, the, the first plan, actually, the very first plan came in with not much commercial, just enough space for maybe a coffee shop and maybe smaller daycare. Okay. Then they were prodded to add a bunch of commercial space. And then at the planning commission meeting discussing the revised plan, I that's having a conversation about development projects do change development projects. So I was there and we talked about whoa, 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 downtown's just a few blocks away, and downtown's trying to be something. So if you have too much commercial here, um, you're going to cut short Br Brin Hill residents making you know, more trips to downtown versus right there at Bryn Hill. So there needs to be a balance. So they cut it back. So there is a bit more commercial. I think they're still planning to be daycare there, but it's not nearly as much as that version of the plan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, looks like Jacqueline had a quick note. Yes. Same thing, yeah. Yep, exactly. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yeah, that was the concern. Yeah. Um, and then at what point, I guess the whole point of trying to get involved with uh, new tenants, do you know at what point they would have any type of 
uh, commitments from businesses, specific businesses that would be tenants there. My guess is they've been talking and trying to get letters of interest from tenants. Um, this is where Chris is our resource. The old rule of thumb used to be that you could not get a construction loan until you had at least a 20% commitment in mm -hmm. previous. Chris, what yeah. say you? I'd say you're still right. <laughs> I'd say it's, you know, today, maybe closer to 25, but 20% is, yeah, you're fine at that point. Okay, so we'll, so we might, before they actually move dirt, that's been, that, that is being paid for with a loan, uh -huh. we, we might have an idea of who, but we've known for a while they wanted to get a daycare in there, like very, and I think that they've been having conversations with companies. So if we don't see daycare there, I'll be shocked. Okay. Now, once you once you start moving dirt, and if you got a loan against it, and you told the bank you're doing one thing, the bank isn't going to let you switch. Okay. Especially in today's rate environment, it ain't happening. From the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> From Mr. Bank. <laughs> Mr. Bank. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Anything else, Bill? Um, I guess I guess the only other thing um, it's it's getting close to seven. Uh, council on Monday, um, Keith Levitt um, from the Port of Portland is the staff chair. I guess is technically I can't remember what his formal title is. He's, been, he's the head of development and equity at the Port of Portland. He's on the Industrial Lands Subcommittee of the Semiconductor Competitiveness Task Force. And he came and gave a presentation about what the task force is, what it was looking at, why um, Jacqueline is rightly impressed about the size of the, the packet. For the <laughs> I don't mean to be distracting, but now I understand why Lori's <laughs> ringing a pillow. I'm yeah, sorry. It's, it's, a, it's a dissertation, I hate to say. Um, <laughs> But he came to talk and, and um, register his the, 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 the commission's interest in working with us on our UGP plan. Okay. Um, what they're looking for in terms of industrial land for the volume of investment they're anticipating from semiconductor and supply chain is many, 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 many times what North Plains could even possibly add to its UGB. But North Plains can have a North Plains size slice of it. And that's what they want to work with us on. Okay, We can be part of, um, I mean, the bigger players in the game um, are the ones that will probably benefit the most. But North Plains, um, that's the best way to put it. North Plains has a role to play in terms of a North Plains size share of it. So, all right. I this I don't want this to go too long, but just to follow up on that is I know in the planning commission discussion with, with the EOA group revisions, we're we're trying to be conservative because that's what's been requested. Does the Chips Act and conversations with the Port of Portland change that perspective on the UGB? That's a great question. Um, no, we haven't changed. We didn't change the, find, the findings of the EOA, the findings in terms of our land need have not changed. Okay. What it did do is it just, it, it did, really what it does is we added information from the task force's work that ends up, number one, it substantiates what our EOA had said before they, what they found. The state is woefully low <laughs> on sites for high paying employers mm -hmm. anywhere. Um, and there's opportunity for North Plains to have some employers move here. Again, a North Plains size slice of it. Um, the other thing what I found was that we're looking at we're looking at some of that employment, uh, some of the employers looking looking for and needing sites rather than a 20 year period, a five year period. Mm -hmm. So what we might see is once the UGB does get expanded, the employers that we thought we might get 10 years out or 15. We might see kind of a rush over the first five years and then it kind of lulls after uh, because of what the CHIPS Act will be doing. But it didn't change the overall land need that we're, we're pursuing. Um, it just sort of kind of made it an even more 
um, or the, you know, and, yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, Bill, I wanted to see, is Doug joining us this evening? We had planned for Doug to be here, but then Doug successfully got a Ford family grant to go to the Oregon Main Street Conference oh, in okay. Klamath Falls. Okay, so that's, that's yeah, so that's where he is. So, so he is he getting school. We will have him here. He can report on what he heard and learned at the, at the, at the conference. Um, and you'll get to meet him. Um, but that was, I don't want to say last minute, but we, we yeah. learned about Mary, actually Mary, said, yeah, will he apply for a Ford family grant? You can do that. So he did, and you got it. Yeah. So that's where he is. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So we'll meet him next month. Yes. It'll be a busy meeting next month. Well, maybe yeah. Steve could talk on. Uh, we have a new uh, city planner now. Okay. We have a city planner. We yes. Have a city planner. Yeah. Yes. Steve. Okay. Steve Miller, planning new planning manager. Mm -hmm. Let's plan that next week too. It'll be about <laughs> three seventy-two pages. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> <all> right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, oh, that's a great first planning commission meeting for him to jump into with both feet. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. He comes party. back. You know, yeah. he's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He has he has experience in in, in this and government planning, and uh, he's got a lot of experience. So, um, any other questions, notes for the greater good here? Uh, sending you all an email because I did find the information for the highway signage. It was not easy to find. So um, I'm just going to send it to all of us. So that way in the future, if we need it for any businesses, we can be the group that knows where to find it because it was a pain in the butt to find. Fantastic. Does it look like there's many uh, layers to get through for applications? Um, it's not it's it just looks like the website was designed back in like the 1990s and hasn't been updated since um but i finally found our exit how much it costs it's 432 dollars per direction not on the off ramp um and then 203 for the ramp itself so i mean you're talking about a 1200 dollars investment for small businesses that can be quite a bit so there's obviously gonna be another conversation to have after we haven't really discussed fundraising as a group a whole lot, um, but that I is mean, a topic we could get into. I was going to say, that was something I was just looking at, and I was like, if we could do something like positive with substantial, it would be, I don't know, creating some sort of fund to be able to pay for these signages for businesses that we feel are really going to attract a lot of people to the city and therefore go to other businesses within the city um, yeah. as we continue to grow. Especially as we head into, I won't say it, it maybe a recession. Um. <laughs> Don't you know if, if you think there's going to be a recession, it, it, it's already hit. Yeah. <laughs> so, twelve hundred bucks is is a it's quite a bit for an unnecessary expense these days for maybe businesses. Maybe we can get a discount since we're going to have to take the sign down to add Taco Bell or the. Yeah. Food. See, I get everyone on board right now while Taco Bell's getting on there. Group yeah. I will get try and get information on the ribbon cutting and email. I'll, I don't know who would be able to come, but if sure. you could, it'd be great representation, yeah. uh, especially for your own dad. Yeah. You have one on the way. They're supposed to be done this week. So. New logo. New logo. We're starting to phase out. The ones that you folks have with and getting ones with new logos, sure. you just can't do them all at once with staff and all the boards and committees and council. And so it's little steps. So, all right. Well, um, thank you, Councilor Smith, for being here as well. Thank you for the public comment as well. We appreciate it. And on the phone, um, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and call this meeting adjourned. 7:01 p.m. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye. See you guys in person next month. Good. All right. Yay. Looking forward to it.